Hi everyone. So in this video we're going to work on two type of problems. We're going to first work with a problem like this where we need to do quotient rule. And then we're going to have a problem like this where we need to do a product rule. Now both of these problems require taking out GCF somewhere along the way. So the first thing I want to show you is how do we know we have to do quotient rule here? The general rule is anytime you have you're given a rational expression and it's nothing but variables and exponents, you know you have to do quotient rule. That's the easier method. So what I'm going to do is, now that I know, I have to, I know it's quotient rule, I'm going to try to figure out what is my f of x and what is my g of x. f of x is always going to be a top equation and g of x is always going to be the bottom equation every single time. Now once we establish that, we're going to take this to the side. f of x is equal to x plus 2 and I'm going to find the derivative as well. The derivative of f of x is just 1. Then I'm going to take g of x. g of x is the bottom, x plus 3 squared. Now, knowing that it's x plus 3 squared, when I have to find this derivative, this is a this is the part that's a little bit challenging to everyone. Because it's an exponent, that means we have to do a chain rule. So we have to bring this 2 to the front. Now when you do chain rule, you're going to keep this the same. You'll always keep the middle, the inside the same. Subtract the exponent by 1, 1. Take the inside and find the root of it. The root of just this is just 1. Multiply your first and last. That's going to leave you with 2x plus 3. Now, knowing that, your next step is to actually just set up your equation. Now, rather than just memorizing the formula for quotient rule, I'd rather have you memorize this. Low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Now what I mean by low d high, low is the bottom because it's lower, high is the top because it's higher. Now knowing that, low you're just going to write whatever the bottom is. x plus 3 squared. The root of the high which we already have up here, the root of the high which is high is x plus 2, the root of x plus 2 is 1, so you're going to pull 1 here. Minus the high x plus 2 times the derivative of the bottom, the root of low, which is 2 x plus 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this. x plus 3 squared minus 2 x plus 2 x plus 3. Now the reason why I'm not writing the bottom, the low squared, is because I know that at the end of the expression and is the end of this derivative, I'm still going to have low squared. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to focus on the top. I'm going to work everything on the top. I'm going to take out anything that needs to be taken out, which is GCF, which is the step that we're in now. I won't actually multiply these because I notice that this is x plus 3 and this also has an x plus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an x plus 3 out. I'm going to put it over here. That's what we call the GCF. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to put x plus 3 on the bottom of every term. That's going to help me figure out what goes in these parentheses. Now because I have an x plus 3 and x plus 3, this is going to cancel out to give me just 1x plus 3. Now when I'm here and I have to simplify, these x plus 3's cancel out to leave me minus 2x plus 2. Then now I'm going to focus on the inside. I'm going to work everything out. x plus 3, x plus 3 minus 2x plus 4, just kidding, minus 4, work everything out, x plus 3, minus x, minus 1, then once I have that, I'm going to put this over my low square because I can't do anything else with top, and my low squared was x plus 3 squared, squared, which then gives me Now, once I have x plus 3 to the fourth, I'm going to notice that this is going to cancel out one of these, which is going to leave me with negative x minus 1 over x plus 3 cubed. And what we could also do is we can go one more step and take out that negative from the top to leave me negative parentheses x plus 1 all over x plus 3 
to the third power. Now, that's how you find this derivative. And the reason why this derivative is hard is because when you're going through this process, if you don't take out this GCF in this step, if you don't take out that GCF, you're going to end up foiling this out and then making your inside a lot more complicated when you know that for sure it's going to end up canceling out the bottoms. Okay? So our derivative for f of x was this one. Okay? Now this is going to lead us to our next example. Whenever they give us a radical. Now, to many students, this is the hardest type of derivative. Anytime you're given a radical with a product or a quotient rule, for some reason we tend to make a lot of mistakes. What I want you to notice is that anytime you have one term on top and a radical on the bottom, I always bring these radicals up to the top every single time. I don't like using radicals with quotient rule. So I'm going to bring this radical to the top. So in doing that, I need to first change this radical to a rational exponent which is x to the fourth plus four to the three over four. Then I'm gonna bring it up top. So I have three x, x to the fourth plus four, negative three to the fourth. Now once I have this, I'm gonna notice that because there's an expression with an x times another expression, I know I have to do product rule. Because product rule is anytime you multiply two, two expressions together when you're trying to find a derivative. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to first say that this is f of x. This is g of x. I'm going to take both of them to the side. f of x is equal to 3x. f prime of x is equal to 3. g of x is equal to x to the fourth plus 4 raised to the negative third over 4. Now when I have to find this derivative, I'm going to notice that because I have an exponent with an expression, I have to do chain rule. So take your exponent to the front, negative 3 over 4, x fourth, and never touch the inside, always leave the inside alone. Subtract 1 from there, that's going to give you minus 7 over 4, and then you have to find the derivative of the inside, which is 4x cubed. Now every single time I do chain rule, I know I'm going to multiply the first and the last, and if you notice, negative 3 fourths times 4x cubed, these 4s are going to end up canceling out, which is going to leave you negative 3, x to the fourth plus 4, raised to the negative 7 over 4. And with that x cubed, don't forget the x cubed. Now once you have your derivative, now you can actually apply this. Now the way I memorize how to use product rule is I bring down the first, bring down my first, derivative of the second, which I already have over here. So I'm going to put it right next to it. Negative 3x cubed, x to the fourth plus 4, negative 7 to the fourth. Bring down the first, derivative of the second, plus bring down the second, derivative of the first. So bring down the first, derivative of the second, bring down the second, derivative of the first. Now once I have that, I'm now going to simplify just like I did in the last problem using quotient rule. I know I can multiply these two out, so I'm going to get negative 9x to the fourth, Bring this 3 to the front. Now I'm here. Now this is the hardest part when finding a derivative. What am I going to do? I have to take out a GCF. You always, always, always have to take out a GCF. Now if you notice, the what the one thing they have in common is this x to the 4th plus 4, and they also have a negative 3. Anytime you have a negative in the front, you want to pull that negative out. So I'm going to take that negative out negative 3 because they both have a 3 in common. Now I know that they both have an x to the 4th plus 4, but to what power? Every time you take out a GCF, you want to take out the lowest power. And if you were to notice, negative 7 over 4 is lower than negative 3 over 4. So I'm going to take out negative 7 to the 4th. But what am I going to be left with the inside? This is when you want to put this underneath here to help you out. Put your GCF underneath. I only put my GCF underneath so it could help me figure out what goes in the inside. Now when I'm actually trying to work this out, I'm going to simplify. Negative 9 over negative 3, 3x to the 4th, 
Now, what's going to happen here? Since they're both the same exact thing, they're going to cancel out. Then I'm left with positive 3 over negative 3, which I know it's a minus. Now, what's going to happen here? Anytime you have the same expression, you have to subtract the exponents when you're dividing. So if you were to subtract these exponents, you're going to get x to the fourth plus 4 raised to the first power. You're always going to get to the first power every single time. Every single time when you subtract these, it should be to the first power. So you should automatically know that this is going to just drop down. Now once you have this, work on the inside. So I'm going to bring down my GCF because you never want to forget about your GCF. It sometimes happens. We sometimes just forget about it. Combine these by first distributing the negative. Bring this down again. Now when you're here, you have nothing else to do. So because you have nothing else to cancel out, simplify, or do anything, you're going to bring this negative exponent down to the bottom. Now what you'll also notice is you're pretty much done. I can change this to a radical and I could also take out a 2 from here. So let me just take out a 2 from the top. So if I take out a 2, it's gonna the multiply the 2 and the 3 are gonna multiply to give you negative 6, and I'm gonna be left with x to the fourth minus 2. Now if you wanted to change this to a radical, this would become x to the fourth plus 4, 7, and the 4 is gonna be on the outside and this is going to be our derivative. Now anytime you have to find this derivative, any single time you have to find the derivative, you want to be careful. It's all about being organized. That's why I always find my derivative on the side. And then when I put it in, bring down the first derivative of the second, which I found on the left side, plus bring down the second derivative of the first. Now when you get to the next step, make sure you take out the GCF. Your GCF is always going to be whatever they have in common. And if I were you, I'd put it on the bottom so it could help me simplify. And then you just want to be organized. So hopefully this helps. Um, and if you get these wrong, just go back and just check and check, check your work just to make sure that you're organized, okay? Good luck. Hope this helps.